What is up, everybody? Welcome to Pub Sports Radio. Here we're going to be breaking down some draft kings and also talking some betting as well. For UFC Vegas 31, very interesting card, especially from a draft kings perspective, where uh, you're going to see a ton of big favorites on this card. Uh, you know, more favorites than we probably have seen in a while. So it's going to make really interesting for draft kings construction. And we're really going to have to, you know, find, you know, those one or, or maybe two dogs for this week. Last week, there was only one dog that won. And it was interesting that the optimal lineup actually had uh, no dogs that won on the, on the optimal lineup. It was uh, Jessica I that got a loss. She was on the optimal lineup. So um, yeah, this week's tough for the dogs. Not really many stick out, uh, but there are some we'll talk about. What is up, everybody in the chat? What is up, Bobby? It's a lonely in here. I agree. Uh, Voodoo Wiz, what's good, generous? I summon thee. Yes, sir. Um, Bobby's already down 80 bucks uh, since I logged on. I don't, I don't know what you mean there. But hopefully you, you start making some money, Bobby. Uh, Brady the Goat, appreciate that, Bailey. But yeah, uh, we'll get into it. If you guys can, hit the like on this video. Would much, much appreciate it. Also, subscribe here to Pub Sports Radio so do not miss out on the uh, on the other content throughout the week. That would be much, much appreciated as well. Uh, almost 8K subs on Pub Sports. So let's try to get 8K in the very near future. So we will start with the first fight of the night. And last week it was supposed to be... Um, Zhang Hu versus Alain Madoxi. I was very high on that fight. And interestingly enough, um, you know, that fight being off actually helped me get a takedown because um, originally with that fight, I had no Jessica I, which she was on the optimal lineup. And then I had only 1% on Aldana. After that fight was off, I added 10% I and I added 8% Aldana. So it's just crazy that, you know, in, in these fights, anything can happen. And it's, it's crazy that, you know, sometimes, and even if you don't think, you know, a fighter is going to score good or whatnot, um, you know, putting you know, just, just 3% could be enough to get a takedown. Um, there was one card where uh, Alice Caceres was going against Chase Hooper, and Hooper was the most popular play on the entire slate. Caceres was like 12% owned. All I did was add 3% Caceres, and I was able to get a takedown there. So I'm um, just weird how things worked out. But now we have the first fight of the night here with Rogerio Nascimento versus Alan Bado. And of course, if you guys know me, you guys know that I love targeting the first fight of the night, and I do want to target this one as well. Um, this fight is going to more than likely finish, and I do want to bring up the finish stats for this one. We have both guys. So you see an 88% knockout rate for Alan Bado. His one win came by a disqualification, which if you go back and watch that fight, um, he did not win. He got submitted. He got dominated. He got taken down multiple times, which is very interesting to note. His opponent, I'm not sure why it was a disqualification. Uh, maybe he popped for PEDs or something. So his, his disqualification win was actually a submission loss that does not show up on his record. But I do encourage you to go back and watch that fight. I believe it was against Todd Stout, um, as I do think it's very important to this matchup because um, what is Nasimeno going to want to do? He's going to want to get this fight down to the mat. He's going to want to get a submission against Alan Badeau, and I, I think it's very likely. Uh, I like Nasimendo. I'm very high on the guy. I know he got knocked out in his last fight against another you know, great prospect in Chris Dawkins, but you know this guy's very young, especially for heavyweight standards, 28 years old, training at a very good camp in American top team. You know His striking's coming along, but he has good wrestling, and his BJJ is, is, is top-notch, um, you know, especially for the heavyweight division. When this guy gets on top, he's very good at advancing, um, he's very good at getting into dominant positions, very good at submissions, ground and pound as well. And I think if he takes down Badeau just once, the fight's going to be over shortly after. I don't think Badeau has good takedown defense. I don't think Badeau has great grappling defense. And I think if Nasimeno gets him down, it's going to be over um, quickly. So I think Nasimeno has takedown upside. I think he has control time upside. And I think Nasimeno does have a first round finish upside as well. As far as Badeau, you know, 7,200, it's a heavyweight fight at the end of the day. Uh, both guys have power. Both guys can put each other out. So I guess, you know, I'll have some Bado, but I do think Nasimeno is the more skilled fighter and the more skilled fighter by a significant margin. So give me Nasimeno at 9K. I, I really do like that. Uh, one of my favorite plays on the slate because he has a, a first round submission upside. And I really do believe that if he does get this fight down to the mat once, which I do think he does, I think he'll make it look pretty easy. As far as, you know, the betting standpoint goes, it's really interesting. We see Nasimeno here at minus 345, but the fight doesn't go to decision. It's only minus 325. And, you know, like I said, neither guy has ever seen the scorecards. Nasimeno, 100% finish rate, has been finishing his only loss. Um, Alan Badeau, 88% finish rate. The one um, disqualification win was a submission loss, technically. So both guys have never won by decision or lost by decision. So, 
if you're going to parlay Nasimeto, you might as well just parlay the minus 325 just to be on the safe side because Bado, if, if Nasimeto does strike with Bado for long periods of time, he could get knocked out. So I, I do like the fight doesn't go as far as a parlay piece. The under one and a half is interesting. I mean, I think it hits, but you know, the over under one and a half, so I don't really like to get maybe the, the alternative minus 275. I don't like that much, um, but I might do a, a parlay with the fight doesn't go to decision minus 325. And I do like uh, the Vieira fight doesn't go to decision. So that might be a parlay of mine, but no action on this fight for me yet. Um, curious to see if they have, they don't have it yet, but not uh, not cemento in round one. Not Semeno by round one sub can be interesting to look at. Not Semeno by submission plus 130. Wouldn't really touch it. I could see a TKO as well. Um, what's Not Semeno inside the distance? Not Semeno inside the distance, minus 175. Again, it's better than the, the minus 345 he's at. But yeah, I do think he wins. I think he wins in the round one. And I do think he scores pretty well on DraftKings. Really high on Not Semeno in the spot. I don't think um, Bado is UFC caliber at all. Morozov, my favorite dog. Yeah, we'll talk about Morozov for sure. Let's go. What's up, Uncle Weezy in the chat hanging out? Shout out to Uncle Weezy. We did a show on a Sunday called Stat Diggers. If you guys have not seen that, go check it out. Went really into deep, really into depth on all the fights. Um, All favorites um, except Morozov and Billy Q for me. Yeah, Billy Q is definitely going to be probably the most popular dog on the slate. We'll talk about why. Morozov, I do like myself. Malcolm, the Iron Chin Gordon is solid too. Yeah, Iron Chin indeed. Nasa Meadow is a nice parlay piece. I'll be heavy on both sides. Yeah, if you want to parlay me, it's fine. Um, personally, I'm probably going to parlay that fight doesn't go instead. But yeah, I think Nasa Meadow gets it done. I might even take a look at that first round, the first round prop for Nasa Meadow. I think if we get to one takedown, the fight will be over. Weezy, best avatar game in the business. I agree. I agree. Definitely agree there. All right. So we will get to the next fight here. Francisco Figueredo going against Malcolm Gordon. And yeah, I thought I was going to be betting Malcolm Gordon. Um, you know, taking a look at Figueredo, he's, he's not great. He is nothing like his brother. He's so low volume. He does nothing on the feet. He just stands there for the most part. But when he does land, he has power. Um, he's, you know, good takedowns, good wrestling. But when he's on top, he does nothing. He just lays there. No cardio. Uh, went to a, a, a close decision with Jerome Rivera in a fight where Rivera outlanded him. Um, couldn't knock out Jerome Rivera. I mean, just so many red flags with um, Francisco Figueredo, especially at this line. And you take a look at Malcolm Gordon. Yes, he's 0-2 in the UFC, but he lost to Amir Albazi. He lost to Sumadarji. Both of those guys would destroy Figueredo in the first round. Um, so, you know, prior to the UFC, Malcolm Gordon looked good. I thought he had a lot of upside. Um, I thought he was very talented. But, man, he's had such a terrible run here. Um but the problem with Malcolm Gordon is going to be that chin. I think he's he's very good on the mat. He's a BJJ black belt. Uh, when he does get taken down, he's very active off his back. He throws up submissions. And I think he very well could win this fight. It's just the chin gives me serious concerns here. Because I went back and watched his fights. I watched a good, like, seven, eight fights of him. And every single fight that I did watch, he was getting hurt. He was getting dropped. He was getting wobbled. And, you know, Figueredo, although he doesn't throw much, he does hit hard. And Figueredo probably puts his light out, lights out here. But... If he does not knock out Malcolm Gordon, I think Malcolm Gordon is very, very alive. So as ugly as it sounds, you know, I do like Gordon as a, as a dog play here. I like uh, Figueredo as well. I think both, I think this is a fight the target for sure. Uh, I do want to take a look at the finish stats here. Both guys are finishers. 83% finish rate for both guys. Uh, Figueredo 25% by knockout, 58% by submission. Malcolm Gordon 33% by knockout, 50% by submission. And take a look at the, the finish, the finishes here, five, Total finish losses for Malcolm Gordon. Never lost by decision. Uh, four by knockout. And then you have Figueredo. Two out of his three losses are by finish. One by knockout, one by submission. So I, I do think this fight finishes. It's a fight I'm going to be heavily exposed to on DK. I think Figueredo's live for a knockout. And I think Malcolm Gordon is live for some type of win, especially if Figueredo does not get him out of there. Figueredo has a very bad gas tank. And Malcolm Gordon is going to, you know, doing more. He's going to be doing more throughout the whole fight. It's just a chin that gives me serious pause here. So taking a look at the odds here, we have Vigoredo minus 315, Malcolm Gordon plus 265. I'm curious to see where the line goes because this line is, is so off. That's not even funny. Vigoredo is, is, is so bad. Both these guys are so bad, but um, you know, Malcolm Gordon, at least he, you know, he, he has a really good ground game, very active. He's going to be doing more. The problem is that chin. I do really like the fight doesn't get the decision, minus 165, the under 2.5, minus 135, 
I'm going to be wait till wait till uh, FanDuel Sportsbook gets a prop out there, and, and when it does, I'm going to hit it. Um, but yeah, minus 165 is not terrible. We love that minus 135 there, but I do think this fight finishes one way or another. Under two and a half, I think it's pretty solid as well. Minus 135, I don't hate it, and I might take a little stab on Malcolm Gordon. I think the line is is so off. Could he get knocked out? Yes, but if he does not get knocked out, he wins the fight. So we'll see what happens there. But, uh, yeah, I do like the fight doesn't get a decision. I think that's the best bet for this fight right here. I see this fight finishing one way or another. Uh, Figgy's better training camp, bro. He's getting better daily. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's just no um, there's no evidence of that at all. Gordon's got a chance. He definitely does. Uh, he definitely does. Figueredo is not great at all. He's, he's really bad. A lot of it after round one, potentially. Gordon could get knocked out by a feather. That's the issue. Yeah, that's exactly the issue. I went back and watched some of his fights, and he gets hit just once. I mean, he'll he'll fall down. It's it's crazy. Uh, Gamrot, Islam, Charlo, and boxing parlay thoughts. I mean, I say it hits. I say it hits. Uh, I do have a parlay for this card. We'll talk about it. None of them are in it. All right, next we have Miles Johns going against Anderson Dos Santos. And I guess some things I want to point out is going to be the, the age of Dos Santos. For a bantamweight, 35 years old, he turns 36. I want to say July 24th. Um, that's the huge red flag for me. You have Miles Johns, who is you know in his prime or just about getting there, training at a very good camp at Fortis MMA, a very good skill set, state champion wrestler in high school. I believe he wrestled a little bit in college as well. As well, um, you know, showing some power in the UFC. Got that nice knockout win in his last fight against Kevin Natividad. And we'll take a look at the finish stats. Uh, only a 45% finish rate for Miles Johns. 81% by uh, Forda Santos. And yeah, you know, Johns is interesting because, you know, I don't know if he'll go for takedowns or not in this fight because Anderson Dos Santos is so dangerous off his back on the feet. You know, I do want to point out some stats. Like, look at this. Anderson Dos Santos, a 28% striking accuracy, a negative 2.14 significant strike differential, 55% striking defense, very hittable. I think Johns can have success on the feet. If it's not working on the feet, that's when I do think he can go to the takedowns. Um, I just don't know if he wants to go to the mat with somebody as dangerous as Anderson Dos Santos. But with that said, you know, Johns has never been submitted. Um, he has went to the ground with black belts before. He went to the ground with Adrian Yanez, somebody that uh, everybody's really high on. was able to stay out of trouble on the mat there. But yeah, I mean, it, it can take down Dos Santos, uh, grind him out on the feet. You know, his jab looked really good in the last fight. I think he can jab him up for three rounds. I just don't know how well it's going to score. Um, but if you're looking for a dog, and like I said, there's not many dogs on this slate. Anderson Dos Santos, if he does win, it's probably by finish. I do not see Dos Santos winning by a decision. So I don't hate Dos Santos as like a dog play here just because of how dangerous he is. But again, he's, he's 35 years old, about to be 36, going to get somebody in Miles Johns who's much younger. So kind of hard to get there. Uh, taking a look at the odds here, uh, Miles Johns minus 164, Dos Santos plus 144. Yeah, I think Dos Santos is finisher bust. I think it's a really good fight for Miles Johns. But then again, Dos Santos is so dangerous, hard to count him out. But I do like Johns to get it done. Uh, the under two and a half plus one sixty five. Uh, the fight doesn't get a decision plus one fifty five. I don't know. I see Johns winning decision, so I wouldn't, wouldn't really touch that myself. But if you do like DeSantis, maybe take a look at the under because I mean both guys can be finished for sure. Uh, DeSantis has been finished a handful of times. I want to say he's been knocked out. A, um, let's see here. DeSantis knocked out three times, submitted two times as well, so he can be finished. So maybe the under is a good look. But uh, I do like Johns to get it done probably by decision. Not my favorite fight to target on DK, though. What's up, Boston Nick? Hanging out in the chat. What's up, Boston Nick? How you doing? Hopefully you're doing well, dude. I like the bet on Miles Johns straight this weekend. Me as well. Me as well. Like, I don't know. I, I think Johns is the much better fighter. And as long as he fights smart, stays out of trouble, I think he wins it. His James... Uh, the James Kraus Kraus cornering anyone this card, master strategist. Um, not that I know of. Not that I know of. Um, showing my support and dropping my like. Appreciate that, but I'm not going to stay tuned in the whole show. Sorry. All good. Like everybody, favorite winning night again. My only dogs, Morozov and Billy. Shout out to you for hanging out and stopping by. Voodoo. Good luck to you. Big booty bitches. I like it. We be pubbing. We want to know who is the most handsome person on the card. Oh my goodness. Um, the most handsome person on the card. Man, there's not many handsome people on the card. Um, I guess I'll have to go with Amanda Lemos. 
Amanda Lamos. What's up, Big Show? How you doing? Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully you are doing well. Probably Amanda Lamos, Nick. Probably Amanda Lamos, if anybody. There's not really many handsome fighters on this card. All right, so getting into the next fight here, we have Khalid Taha going against Sergey Morozov. And, yeah, there's not many dogs on the slate, like I mentioned. I think Morozov somebody to definitely consider. Uh, he is 0-1 in the UFC, but, you know, no shame in that. Got fed to the Wolves in his first fight. And he's somebody that can go for takedowns. And Taha has been taken down, I think, like 10 times in four fights. He's been controlled a lot. So if Morozov does mix it up, I think he's very live to win here. And I think he's very live to score decent as well. So, yeah, I do like Morozov as a dog. I don't know if I'll get there at the betting window. But, yeah, I think the line's way off because Taha is very dangerous. But I think, um, you know, Morozov has more tools to win. My, plus 141, it's not terrible. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll get there or not. But, yeah, that's very tempting. But, uh, yeah, I do want to take a look at the finish stats. Both guys are pretty dangerous. Both guys have some power. Taha, an 85% finish rate, 67% by knockout. The guy hits like a truck. And we have seen Morozov get knocked out before him. And then Morozov, a 69% finish rate, half his wins by knockout. So, again, both guys have power. I think this is a pretty solid fight to target. But if Morozov can mix in those takedowns, I think he can not only win, but score pretty decent on DK. So, 7,900, I don't hate it. Uh, I will take some Sergey Morozov on a card that, where there's not many dogs. Uh, Morozov is definitely somebody that sticks out. And as far as a betting perspective, I am very, very tempted to take a shot on Sergey Morozov for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a good look. I think it's a good look for sure. Tate all day. Yeah. I'm going with Tate as well. Uh, Morozov classic example of coming off of a loss to a good opponent. So tough to really know. Yeah, he is for sure. Uh, not many dogs in this car. So we're going to take a small shot on Morozov. Agreed. Agreed. Not picking many dogs this week, but Morozov is something that definitely stuck out for sure. Um, I did see, um, I do want to look it up. Sergey. Or I think he's training at American Top Team, unless I'm thinking of somebody else. But if he's training at American Top Team, I, I love that. I love that, especially for this fight. So let's see here. Um, Can't find it. Can't find his Instagram. But I think he's training at American Top Team, with it, it, which is if he is. I think that's huge, especially for this fight. So something else to mention there. Uh, but, yeah, if he, if he fights Smargus for takedowns, I think he's very live here. Taha can be taken down, 61% takedown defense. He's been controlled for a decent amount throughout his career thus far. His only win against Boston Salmon, somebody that got cut from the UFC right away. So yeah, I, I think uh, Morozov's live, and I'm, I'm talking myself into a into a shot here. Um, DK needs to put an over under for ATT wins this week. I think they have 62 fighters going on Saturday. Yeah, they'd have a bunch for sure. Yeah, and I think Morozov's one of them. I'm not 120 percent sure, but yeah, if, American Top Team. Don't hate that. Diaz Lawler. Five round fight. Yeah. Nice. Um, when's that coming up? It's coming up in um is it August or September? I can't wait for that. I cannot wait for that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's gonna be a good fight. Nick Diaz coming back. That's awesome. All right, so we'll get to the next fight here. Mana Lamos, Monster Rat Ruiz. Um, yeah, I like Lamos here. But I like her more as a parlay piece. It's just hard for me to get there on DK where we have Islam Makachev up there. We have Nasimento up there. We have Rodolfo Vieira up there. Uh, we have so many great plays up there. That's really hard for me to get to Lamos. But as far as like picking a winner, um, as far as getting a parlay piece, I think Lamos is a very good parlay piece. I think she's better than Ruiz everywhere. Everywhere. And I think she's better everywhere by a significant margin. They brought Ruiz in to build up Cheyenne Bays. That's what I think. I mean, I think they wanted to build up the, the Bays. Um, both um, Cheyenne Bays and the other Bays that lost to uh, Bruno Silva, and they actually lost on the same night. And Ruiz, um, she's not great. She's not great. She has one thing, and it's that wrestling. She has no striking. She has no striking defense at range. She's going to get destroyed against Amanda Lamos. So I do see why Lamos is minus 500. She's fought the much better competition by a mile. She's dangerous on the mat. She's dangerous on the feet. And I do want to bring this up. So very interesting, 89 percent finish rate for Amanda Lamos a uh, one decision win she is very dangerous uh, although Ruiz has never been finished um, you know this is going to be the best fighter that Ruiz has ever fought so I think Lamos does get it done inside the distance it's just so hard to get there when you have Makachev up there for a hundred dollars more um, it's so hard to get there when you have Nasimento for a, a couple hundred less 
But yeah, I think Lamos is fine. I think she's in play. I'm not going to fade her or nothing like that, but there's just other players I do like more. But yeah, I do have her in a parlay. I will say that. And I do think she wins pretty comfortably. I think she's a beast. I think she's a beast. And I don't think Ruiz is really UFC caliber, to be honest. But yeah, minus 500. I know it's probably not the best idea to put a minus 500 women's MMA fighter in, in your parlay or whatnot. But I think this is definitely an exception here. So some props I'm going to be looking at is Lamos inside the distance. So the under two and a half plus 115, if I doesn't go plus 105, I don't hate both of those. I think Lamos finishes here. Lamos um, by KO plus 175. Lamos by submission plus 700. I think she could sub her or submit her to be honest. Uh, Lamos inside the distance is plus 125, plus 145. Yeah, if I can get the inside the distance around like plus 150 range, I'll, I'll definitely take a shot there. Uh, just waiting for FanDuel Sportsbook to open up those props. But yeah, I'm very high on Lamos this week. I think she's a much better fighter, and it's really not even close. I mean, I'd be pretty shocked if Ruiz wins this fight. Her path to victory is laying on Lamos for 15 minutes, hugging her against the cage, um, which again, it just doesn't seem all that likely. She's so small. She's five foot, 61 inch reach. She's very, very small. Lamos is going to be much bigger. Lamos is somebody that used to fight at 135. So I really find it hard to see Ruiz just like holding against the cage for 15 minutes, to be honest. It's turn 26. There you go. Can't wait. Can't wait. That's sick. I agree. I agree. Uh, I partly Lamos with fighters next week. Tiny bit worried she could cage um, grapple in gas. Yeah, that's a concern. She has gas before, but it looks like she is working on her gas tank. She gassed bad in the Leslie Smith fight. But again, that was at 135. Her gas tank has looked much, much improved. Yeah, Lamos is a beast, uh, but she has 34. She is 34, but yeah, she's good. She's very good. Lamos has that crazy power. This is going to be an ass shaving. I agree. I think someone's ass is getting shaved for sure. She got the height advantage with the bunny ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she does. She does. The bunny ears for sure and the bunny tail. Can't wait to see that. But yeah, I think Lamos does get it done here. All right, next we have Daniel Rodriguez going against Preston Parsons. So this is actually going to close up my parlay. I kind of like this back-to-back. -back. So I, I did parlay Daniel Rodriguez with Amanda Lemos. I think both of them get it done. And the thing is, Preston Parsons, he's not bad. He's not bad at all. He's very young, 25 years old. And he reminds me a lot of a, of a Daniel Rodriguez. He has kind of like the same fighting style where he's going to throw a ton of volume. He's very dangerous on the mat. But it's just such a tough ask to come in and, and beat Daniel Rodriguez on short notice. Daniel Rodriguez is, is a very good fighter. I like this guy a lot. 14 and 2, arguably could be 16 and 0. It went back and watched his two losses, especially the Dolby fight. I still don't know how the judges scored it for Dolby. I actually scored it 30 27 Rodriguez. Um, so, yes, I, I, I watched that fight like three or four times. I still don't know how any judge could score that fight for Dolby. Dolby got outlanded like two to one basically in every single round. It wasn't even close, it wasn't even competitive. But um, it is what it is. Rodriguez, um, he's a 10th planet BGJ, I think purple belt or, or brown belt. And the guy's a legit grappler, never been submitted in, in 16 fights. And that's important here because if you take a look at this, something very interesting is Preston Parsons, not only he has a 100% finish rate, 100% of his wins coming by submission. So I find it hard to believe that, you know, he's going to go out here and submit somebody as credentialed as a grappler as D-Rod. Like D-Rod's grappling is good. Um, he's, he submitted Tim Means, has a lot of submissions on his record. And I think Rodriguez is the better grappler. I think, um, you know, I've seen Parsons get reversed multiple times. I've seen Parsons get taken down. I've seen Parsons get submitted before. And I just think D-Rod's better pretty much everywhere. And, you know, Parsons coming in on short notice, the pace that he pushes, I don't know if he'll be able to keep it up. Both guys push a crazy pace. I think this fight as a whole scores well on DK. But I really like D-Rod here as a parlay piece. I really like him at 8,800 as well. I think the winner scores good. And Preston Parsons has never seen the scorecards win or loss. 100% submission rate. And I, I don't really like that in that fight. If, if he had some knockouts on his record, maybe I'd consider him a little bit more. But to see him go out there and submit um, a legit grappler, 10th um, planet, and D-Rod, and I just don't see it happening. So I like D-Rod. like him as a parlay piece. D-Rod never been finished. He's tough as nails, never been knocked out, never been subbed. And you don't see that changing here. Parsons has been knocked out. Parsons has been submitted. So I could see like a D-Rod knockout or submission, to be honest. But one way or another, I do see this fight finishing as a whole. Let's see the odds here. Yeah, so I was able to parlay D-Rod. FanDuel Sportsbook opened him up at uh, minus 215 for some reason. And they currently have him at minus 250. Other books minus 265. 
Under one and a half, I don't know. I wouldn't really touch that. Uh, minus 115. Alternative under minus 215, not terrible. Minus 280 fight doesn't go. Could be a, a decent parlay piece, but I like D-Rod here. I like D-Rod to get it done. D-Rod inside the distance, minus 125. No, thank you. Uh, that's about all they got right now. But yeah, give me D-Rod. Give me D-Rod. I do think he gets it done. But yeah, Parsons is no joke. Parsons is good. 25 years old. I think this guy's a lot of upside. It's just a tough ask coming in here against Dan Rodriguez on short notice. Um, You bet women's MMA. Why? Well, sometimes there are exceptions. Like uh, Amanda Lambus, she's a beast. She's really good. Um, I've got a D-Rod Miles Johns parlay. I like that. I like that quite a bit. I think both of them get it done for sure. All right, so let's see what my namesake can do. Yeah, he's not bad. He's not bad at all. But D-Rod, D-Rod's uh, going to be a tough test, a very tough test, especially your UFC debut, especially short notice. Uh, just a lot of things going against Preston Parsons. All right, next we have a very fun fight, and Gabriel Benitez going against Billy Quarantillo. I think this is probably my pick for fight of the night because both guys are very exciting. Billy Quarantillo, always a always a dog. I mean, you can never count this guy out. This guy has extreme toughness. He has extreme cardio. And I think one thing we got to mention, Uncle Weezy brought this up on Stat Diggers, is uh, Benitez missed weight bad for the Jonathan Pierce fight. That fight ultimately got called off. So I do want to see the weigh-ins for this one because if Benitez looks like crap on the scales, um, that's going to really favor Billy Quarantillo because Quarantillo is going to push a pace. He's going to throw a ton of volume. And I don't know if, if Benitez has a bad weight cut, I don't think he'll be able to keep up in this fight. But with that said, um, there is a stat that really, really does concern me for Billy Quarantillo. It's going to be that 42% striking defense. He's very hittable. He relies on his chin. He relies on his toughness, which he has a both. But you do not want to be hittable against a guy like Gabriel Benitez. And just, you know, comparing their striking defenses, uh, Gabriel Benitez, 70% striking defense, which I looked it up and it was the third best in the UFC, obviously first best in the division. And Billy Quarantillo, a 42% striking defense. So Billy's path to victory is, you know, probably getting his ass beat for about a round and a half. And Benitez maybe may or not slow down just based off the pace. But yeah, I think Billy's a live dog. He's always in play. His fights really score well. I think he can mix in takedowns here and there. Benitez does have a 56% takedown defense. So, you know, Billy's uh, you know, probably going to be one of, honestly, if not the highest owned dog on the entire slate. Like, I don't really see it. Maybe Morozov's going to have some ownership. But, yeah, Billy Quarantillo probably is the, the highest owned dog on the slate. And probably for a good reason. I mean, the guy, if he wins, he's going to score well. Um, just take a look at his significant strikes land at 7.04. That's a ton. Um, he puts on a pace. He puts on pressure. So we'll see what happens. But I do want to see the weigh-ins for sure. I do want to see the weigh-ins for sure. If, if Benitez looks like crap, that's going to favor Billy quite a bit. So I do want to take a look at the odds. Um, the odds are dropping rapidly. We now see Benitez at minus 178 and Quarantillo at plus 153. Yeah, um, Billy is going to be the dog of the week. Everybody's going to bet this guy. I'm personally going the other way, but I'm going to wait till the weigh-ins for a couple of reasons. I want this line to drop more. And I want to see Benitez on the scales. If Benitez looks like he had a good weight cut, if he looks good on the scales, I probably will be betting at Benitez depending on the line. But if he looks like crap, um, maybe Billy Corn to you, a sprinkle round three could be something to look at because, yeah, you do not want to have a bad weight cut. You do not want your cardio to not be on point against a guy like Billy Corn to you. So I think the weigh ins are going to be most important for this fight. It's going to help me decide whether I, I bet on this fight or whether I lay off of it. But yeah, I, I do like Benitez if the weight cut all goes good. But now um, some huge red flags here. And I definitely see why some money's coming on Billy. He's a, he's a dog. He's a dog. He's always live. And I do like him quite a bit. Uh, if I doesn't go to decision plus 125, I don't know. I, I, I kind of struggle with that because Billy's so tough. He has been knocked out before. But Billy's so tough. Um, I don't know if Gabriel Benitez does knock him out. But yeah, I'm going to monitor that line. And I'm going to monitor those weigh-ins, and then we'll see what happens then. I'll talk about the weigh-ins and all that on my Friday show on my channel, but I think the weigh-ins for this fight are most important for sure. Does Ciara Eubanks win next week? I saw she's fighting somebody I'm not overly familiar with, so probably she's a big favorite, but I haven't looked into that fight yet. Rock d -Rod, yeah, very high on d -Rod this week. I think he gets it done. Uh, have him in a parlay, so really invested in d -Rod this week for sure. What is up, Billy? Hopefully you did well for uh, 264. Feels like they're getting decent guys on short notice, but giving them awful matchups on the debut. That's yeah, exactly, exactly. 
Brady is Benitez uh, better than Spike Carlisle because Spike won the first easily and then had nothing. Uh, yeah, he's better than Spike Carlisle. Spike Carlisle got cut. And I do think Spike Carlo is a, a notorious gasser. He has no gas tank. Benitez has a better gas tank than Carlisle. Um, yeah, Carlisle, that was a close fight. That was a close fight with him and Billy. Very close fight. Uh, Billy Q, as odds are dropping my book, I took the shot at plus, or at $2.70. There you go. Don't hate the dog shot, but personally, I am going the other way. Moises is going to be Islam. Watch. I don't know about that. Is I'm going to hit Moises with the rock bottom and maybe the people's elbow. There you go. Billy Q has a DK work rate of 5.08 points per minute. Not counting win points. His pace is crazy. Own both sides and DK for sure. Second highest own fight of the night. Yeah. Going to have both sides. Uh, I think Billy's, uh, like I said, going to be the most popular dog on the slate and probably for a really good reason. Interesting to see how Islam's cardio holds up over five rounds. Also, if Moises can use his BJJ to create scrambles. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I personally think it does, but we don't know. We don't know. He's never been to a fourth round yet, which is interesting. All right, do want to stop and pause to say if you guys can like the video, that'd be much appreciated. Also, subscribe to Pub Sports Radio here. So you're not miss out on the other content throughout the week. I go live here every Tuesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, cover some DraftKings, cover some betting. Me and Uncle Weezy are going live every Sunday, 7.15 p.m. Eastern time. We do a show called Stat Diggers. If you guys have not checked it out, go check it out. Lots of great information there. Um, we go deep, balls deep into the stats. It's a really good time and lots of great info. So we'll get to the next fight here. And um, yeah, what a shit show of a fight. We have Rodolfo Vieira going against Dustin Solzfist. And I thought, you know, I was going to pick Solzfist, maybe maybe bet him even. But you go on and watch the tape on Solzfist, and there's just not a lot of great things I'm seeing. Uh, he has horrible takedown defense, which in this matchup, it's not great. Um, he's, he's really comfortable and confident in his BJJ. He's comfortable to be on his back. Um, doesn't really try to get up. If he is on his back, he kind of just throws up submissions, which in this fight, it's, it's not going to work. So Stoltzfus, his path to victory is going to be uh, Vieira gassing out. That's his path to victory. And man, did Vieira gas out in his last fight against Anthony Hernandez. It was horrible. Um, probably the worst gas tank in the UFC, to be honest, in Vieira. It's just he's going to have so many opportunities early to get a finish. And that's why I really do like Vieira on DK. He has first round upside. I do not really see him winning outside of the first round. Um, but then again, like he did submit Oscar Pajota late in that second round of, of his, of his fight. So he could maybe improve that cardio. I mean, it can't, can't get any worse, can it? So maybe Vieira does, you know, find a submission round one or round two. I think he's the much better fighter and it's not even close. It's just the cardio, the cardio is horrible. So <clears throat> I like both sides here. I like Vieira. I think he has first round upside. Stoltzfus, yeah, if he, if he survives that first round, I think he can get like a second or third round finish. It's just a just a tough, tough ask. It's a big if. So, yeah, I'm going to be high on Rivera here on DK, but it's hard to ignore the upside of Stoltzfus if, if uh, Vera does gas out. Um, so, yeah, both sides on DK for me, I think it's a very important fight, especially Vera at 8,700. I like that price tag quite a bit. Taking a look at the odds here, Vera is minus 220. And I kind of expect that line to close a little bit. I think a lot of people are going to take a shot on Stoltz Fist just based on the fact that, you know, Vieira can very well gas out, which is uh, understandable. Under one and a half is plus 100. I, I don't hate that at all. Uh, if fight doesn't go to decision, I don't hate that as a parlay piece. I'd be kind of shocked if this fight did see the scorecards. I think it's either Vieira early or Stoltz Fist late. But yeah, the under one and a half is not a terrible look at plus money, I'd say. All right. Um, Brady got post Vieira stress disorder. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. That was horrible night. I had so much Vieira and Fluffy Hernandez got me submitted Vieira. It was terrible. Um, to be honest, I see Moises striking hard with Islam the first round and then maybe a second round finish for Moises. Wow. Okay. I wonder if you saw it, I had affected, uh, Rodolfo could be uh, hard to back him after his last performance. I agree. I'm not going to be betting Vieira ever again. Feels like a dogger pass. Yeah, it could be. This is the perfect matchup for Rodolfo to get back on track, but I can't bet the dude ever again. Decent DK options. I agree. I'll never bet this guy again. Ever. Ever. Gas tank's horrible. No, thank you. What's up, Melon? Let's go. Sorry, Melon. All good. Melon, thanks for stopping by. But yeah, I do like uh, Rivera quite a bit on, on the DK side of things. I would, I would uh, not put this guy in the parlays this week. All right, next we have Mateus Gamrot going against Jeremy Stevens. Uh, Gamrot, 8,600. Stevens, 7,600. I like this fight. I like this fight from a DK perspective because you have Stevens who, 
If he wins, it's going to be by knockout. This guy is very, very dangerous. I do want to go to the finish weights on this one. Gamrot, a 75 or uh, Stevens, a 75% finish rate, 64% by knockout. Um, not sure about the amount of knockouts he has, but he has a ton. 46 fights, 64% by knockout. Um, he's a finisher. Gamrot has never been knocked out, but he has been dropped before. And if anybody can knock somebody out, it's going to be Jeremy Stevens. The guy has legit power. So Stevens, for me, is a decent dog option. Gamrot, I think, is a decent option as well because he puts on a great pace. Lots of volume from Gamrot. Solid wrestling as well. I think he can get multiple takedowns and probably win a decision. Um, there are some other options I do like more than Gamrot, but it's hard to ignore the takedown upside, potential control time upside as well. Uh, but yeah, I don't mind this fight. I don't mind this fight. I think Stevens is a solid dog option based off that power. If he does win, it's probably by knockout. But for me personally, I'm going to go with Gamrot to win. Uh, as far as the betting odds go, I thought it was going to be parlaying Gamrot this week. I decided to pass just based off of how dangerous Stevens is, but probably a solid parlay option, I'd say, um, if he does not get knocked out. But um, Steven is just so dangerous. I don't really want to don't really want to go there myself. Uh, the fight doesn't go to decision. Minus 145, under 2.5, minus 115. Tough one. I think if Stevens wins, it probably goes under. If Gamrot wins, it probably goes over. But, yeah, no props for me, no bet for me on this one. I'm going to sit back and watch it. But on DK, we'll have kind of exposure to both sides. But not a fight that I'm overly going to be targeting, but I do think it's uh, an interesting to target for sure. I'd rather put my money on Blackjack than Bet Vera. I'm with you as well. Gamrot, third round KO. Could happen. Uh, Hillary is super tough. I just worry she gets out-wrestled. Ciara sucks, though, so I'm considering the dog shot. I have not looked in that fight, so no comment from me. Stevens doesn't have to make um, a cut and has his back against the wall and still can't back him. Yeah, I can as well. I can as well. But, yeah, if he does win, it's by knockout. So I will have some DraftKings lineups with Jeremy Stevens for sure. Uh, Gamrod better wrestle if he doesn't. He might lose. Stevens' power is crazy. Luckily, Gamrod is attempting 10.5 takedowns per fight. Yep, he better wrestle for sure. Or Stevens is very live for a knockout. So, yeah, we'll definitely see. I think Stevens is definitely a good option on, on DK as a dog. All right, next we have Amisha Tate going against Marion Renault. Um, yeah, I kind of like Tate on DK. The problem is she hasn't fought in five and a half years, but if she shows up and looks anything like the Misha Tate of old, I think it's a solid matchup for her. Renault has been taken down at least once in her last 10 fights. Renault has a 50% takedown defense, and Misha Tate's going to want to get this fight down to the mat. She has good wrestling. She has good grappling. But again, the only problem is she has not fought in so long. But if she does show up, she looks good. Um, I think this is a very, very winnable fight against the 44-year-old Mary Renault, who I believe is the oldest fighter on the UFC roster. Mary Renault, I think, was on like a four-fight losing streak as well. So yeah, 8,200 for um, Misha Tate. I don't hate that. I don't hate that. I don't, I'm probably not going to bet her because the five-and-a-half-year layoff is just very, very sketchy, but a lot of people are betting her, which I, I get it. I get it, but man, that's such, such a big layoff. Such a big layoff there, but I do like Tate for DraftKings. Take down upside, control time upside. I do think she wins. I don't know if she submits Renault or nothing like that. I do think she wins the decision, but probably racking up points along the way. So I like Tate. I like her on DK. Uh, definitely will be betting her, especially where the line's at now. Um, Weezy, bring the heat. Yep, Weezy always brings the heat for sure. Do the UFC wants Tate to win this? Uh, Tate sounds really motivated. Yep, they do for sure. But man, the layoff just scares me away. Tate tends to quit in fights, but she should win. I agree, she should win. This is a, such a winnable fight for her, but the layoff is uh, kind of getting me there. All right, so we're going to talk about the main event real quick. Um, Makachev, 9,400, is probably my favorite play on the entire slate. He has five rounds to work with, You know, multiple takedowns, a ton of takedowns, a um, ton of control time. We've seen Moises taken down a ton. We've seen him controlled a lot as well. But Nair Dariush and their fight... Benil uh, controlled him for like 13 and a half minutes in a 15-minute fight. I kind of see the same thing here. I think Makachev is going to take him down, grind him out, control him for five rounds or up until he gets late finish. And I think Makachev has the highest upside on the entire slate. So Makachev will be the highest owned um, fighter on the entire slate for a really good reason. And he will be my highest owned fighter on the slate and for a really good reason as well. I do think he wins this fight and he wins it by getting a ton of takedowns, a ton of control time which is going to score well on DK. Um, Yeah, minus 700 on the money line. Probably won't get there. Probably not going to throw him in a parlay, but I do think he wins. 
The under four and a half rounds plus 120. The fight doesn't go as plus 110. I actually don't hate a shot at that. Um, I do. Con- I can see Makachev getting a late finish, like I said. Moises has been five rounds before. Makachev has not. But we have seen Moises slow down in fights, especially fights where you know fighters push a pace, and Makachev is going to 100% uh, push a pace here. So I could see Moises slowing down. I could see Makachev finishing him. So I don't hate the fight. doesn't go to decision. I want to see what Makachev inside the distance is. Plus 145, I don't love that. But yeah, the fight doesn't go as interesting because if Moises wins, it's going to be by a submission, maybe a, a KO. But if Makachev wins, I see it being a later finish. So I, I do like that fight doesn't go. I might be placing a bet on that. But I'm going to kind of wait. I see some money coming in on the fight goes to decision, which understandable, but I'm kind of going the other way here. I think this fight is going to finish one way or another personally. But yeah, definitely a fight that you're going to want to target. I don't see this not ending up in the optimal lineup with the pace of Makachev, the takedowns, the control time, all that good stuff. For no retirement fight, uh, tread lightly. She's tough. Yep, she is tough. Never been finished ever. Uh, I don't, but uh, Jarjus Daniel won a fight after a five-year layoff, but a five-year layoff wasn't kind to poor Matt Wyman. Yep, I mean, it affects everybody different. affects everybody different for sure. So I'll talk about my favorite plays on the slate. Uh, Makachev, Vieira, uh, and Nascimento. For dogs, I like Morozov. I like Billy Corintillo. Uh, Stoltzfus is a dog I do like. Stevens is a dog I like. Um, as far as a pump play, um, Alan Badeau. Badeau, it's a heavyweight fight. Neither guy has seen the scorecards. Badeau, uh, Malcolm Gordon has a punt. But, yeah, I mean, it should be a good card. Uh, just got to find you know that, that one dog. Got to find that one or two dogs. I don't see a lot of dogs winning this week, so we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully it's a good card. I think it'll be fun. I think there's going to be some violence for sure. Uh, hopefully FanDuel Sportsbook gets, the, gets these props out so I can start making some bets. But, yeah, it should be a good card. Um, Tate's more ripped than Matt Wyman. Yeah, I agree. Fight doesn't go to the distance is a must play. We don't know Makachev's cardio. Wouldn't be surprised if, if both could finish late. Yeah, I could see a finish either way. But, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for hanging out. As always, every Tuesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Much appreciated, everybody in the chat stopping by. Um, yeah, so I do have a live stream on my channel, DFS by the numbers, on Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. We'll talk about the weigh ins. I think the weigh ins going to be very important for some of these fights. So, Come stop by, say hi on Friday, and uh, yeah, that's about it. You guys can follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram is DFS by the numbers. I'll be posting all my bets on Saturday. So that's about it, guys. Thanks, Brady. Appreciate it. No problem, Bobby. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks, Big Dog. Thanks, Brass Knuckles, for hanging out. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys soon, and good luck for UFC Vegas 31. Let's make some